comfortable. I would like a video on my lap. These are all paid actors, so. Okay. This is so weird. <laughs> okay, we're doing this. We're doing this. So, hi. My name is Kat, and I'm gonna try this booktube thing out. <laughs> myself on booktube a lot and it was a sort of a pandemic find. and I have two other friends Ivana and Kat and we were all supposed to make our booktubes together but one of us chickened out <laughs> and it's been so lovely to see them sort of just exploring this new creative avenue and I got FOMO <laughs> so here I am I'm going to do the newbie booktube challenge and answer some questions and just introduce myself and force myself <laughs> to put something out into the ether in hopes that it sort of oils the path for me to get comfortable in this space and create things. So yeah, let me get the questions and we can we can start. Let's read what um, Yogi T has for us. Let the opportunities come to you. I feel like these haven't hit as hard lately. So why did you start this channel? So I stumbled across book communities totally by accident and they're like my secret happy place <laughs> and I just feel like I am a quiet viewer of a lot of great people and I sort of just wanted to like wiggle my way into the community and connect with all of y'all on here. I also feel like long form video is just a nicer way to talk authentically and genuinely about books. I think sometimes I feel like I have to overcraft a review on bookstagram. I'm also just like really not great at reviews. <laughs> I think I'm great at talking about how books made me feel, but in terms of just like being at the end of something and talking about a book as a whole, I'm not great at that. But I love discussing like the meaty weird things that happen throughout a book as I'm reading and so I think this is just like a great platform to talk more thoroughly and elaborate without like a character limit. Although I know there's a limit, like I'm not gonna make hour long videos, don't worry. <laughs> so yeah, that's why I made this, ch this channel account. <laughs> What are some fun and unique things you can bring to booktube? I love that everyone who's answered this question is like, well, we're talking books, so there's a limit on the fun. <laughs> um, and I kind of feel the same. What are some fun things that I can bring to booktube? Again, I don't think this is fun, but I think I'm a little bit of a nerd when it comes to... I, I really like to make projects of things. Things like at the beginning of the year, I read Garth... Well, I started to read Garth Greenwell's essay on a sentence by Raven Leilani, and I had read Luster, I think at the end of 2021, and I adored that book. And once I started reading Garthy's essay, I was just like, mm, do I have the willpower enough to not reread Luster right now? I don't. So I immediately picked up Luster, and I read those side by side, and it was such a fun project and experience. So I think that's sort of what I would do, and I think this is a cool platform to explore those kinds of things instead of just like doing them silently and talking to no one about them. So I'm sorry in advance. <laughs> yeah, I make homework assignments of everything, and so I think that might be cool in this space. Or not, we'll see. What are you most excited for about this new channel? Um, I think I've mentioned it before, but I'm just interested in exploring a new creative outlet I have, I've always interrogated this idea of like churning things out, that kind of content versus like spending time with something and working on something, making projects of things. I like projects. <laughs> yeah, I'm just really excited to see what this is all about and see if I vibe with it. A lot of friends have spoken about the editing aspect of this and I think that's so cool. Like there's just this whole other world of the mechanisms behind creative outlets that I am really curious to get to know and I'm welcoming the frustration. I know those will come too. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm just curious about learning something new. I think learning something new is always great. Why do you love reading? I'm gonna, I'm gonna edit this question and also kind of mention what kind of reader I am. For me, writing is like top three types of art form. I love craft. I love writing that deconstructs and defamiliarizes. I think there is like this thing that happens when you encounter a really fantastic piece of writing and it's oftentimes just like a sentence and it it like knocks something out in me and I am chasing that feeling constantly. So for me reading is just like looking for that feeling. I think I first encounter it when I 
we were reading as a class on Mira Cisneros is A House on Mango Street. I think that was my first encounter of it. And then, yeah, I was in high school reading Anais Nin, to be honest. I probably shouldn't have been reading that at that time, but I just remember like being constantly out of breath reading her. And that's sort of what I'm always looking for when I read. So as a reader, <laughs> um, I think, and Rebecca has made a great video on the different types of readers or like the different things that we're looking for in reading. So for me, story isn't always as important as the writing. Although I will sometimes read a good story and sort of suspend my need for good writing, if that makes sense. And I shouldn't say good writing, work that is hyper focused on craft and writing. And I think other writers hyper focus on story and that's, you know, that's totally valid. And I think most people seek stories for that, but I definitely am one to read something for its sentences. Typically, I think I look for things that inter or that really explore different characters. I like to see why people are motivated to do the things they do. I sometimes feel like an alien um, and I love people watching and I kind of love reading for the same thing. I just like to be in someone else's mind and understand what drives them. And also sort of just like, and I shouldn't do this because I read really weird books, but also just measure up and be like, oh, okay, I feel that too. I think shouldn't do that with something from like Otessa Moshrag or anything, but you know. <laughs> yeah, I like character studies for sure. That was so rambly. This is going great. Um, what book or series got you into reading? I was definitely like a Sarah Destin girly. I think I was a Nicholas Sparks girly. Maybe not, maybe that's not fair to say. I think I just read Dear John. <laughs> I can't even remember the name. Oh, and the, the big one. What's the big one? With the, with the journal. The notebook. <laughs> I was definitely a Twilight girly. I was, I was the kind of, oh. I may or may not have been at Barnes & Noble several midnights over consecutive years waiting for the release of certain Stephanie Meyer books. <laughs> but we grow, we evolve. Uh, and I remember also like reading Colette Hosseini's A Thousand Splendid Sons. I remember that experience because it was just sort of like, I remember the, the flip of the page where it was just like, oh, all right, we're not sleeping. We're not really using the bathroom. We're just sort of nixing human needs until the end of this book like i remember being really held captive in those moments by certain books that definitely happened with twilight my friend kept urging me to read it and i was like vampire is not my thing and she kept pushing me and pushing me and i remember she gave me twilight and i literally asked my mom we didn't live very close but i asked my mom to drive me over so that i can pick up new moon from her because i just i could not not have that book. I don't know that I answered the question. Oh my god, <laughs> I'm so sorry. What challenges do you think starting a booktube channel will be the hardest to overcome? I definitely think it has to do with- I like being pretty anonymous and I don't like being perceived so this is completely out of my comfort zone but I think I think just like being in front of the camera not overthinking it too much. I feel like I still have this like like millennial fear of being online if that makes sense like, growing up it was just like be careful what you post on the internet whatever you post on the internet someone's gonna find it it's like i'm talking books so it's fine <laughs> but i think I've, I've always had that fear of being too present online and so i think that'll be something to overcome but i have seen so many people be like don't let that stop you from doing the creative things that you want to do and this isn't much different than like i mean it is it is it's different but it's not much different than just like sharing your thoughts like on bookstagram or something just because my face is here doesn't change what i want to share or the fact that i am sharing and i think overcoming that will be the hardest part but i'm excited too when did you start reading i started reading pretty early my mom loves telling the story we would go to sleep when i was very young uh, she would always read a bedtime story to me sometimes my mom would be tired and she wouldn't have the energy or like you know, something would come up and she wouldn't be readily available to read the bedtime story to me. And I would get hella aggravated. And one day I like tantrumed and I was like, I cannot wait to be able to read by myself so I don't have to wait for you. <laughs> so I've always liked reading. <laughs> I don't really have many readers in my family. So it's, it's always really interesting. I'm always very curious about that question of like where reading comes from or like the love for reading because I know some people have seen exemplars of that or templates of that because they come from very bookish parents 
And I think like my mom always just knew that that was a good habit to maybe instill in a kid. <laughs> um, but I don't really have many readers in my family and so it's always just curious to me. But yeah, I've, I've always loved, I've always loved reading. I remember going to the library and, and just like being in awe that that was something that was of access to us. And Scholastic Book Fairs, man, those were like <laughs> pivotal events in my childhood. Like I have flashbulb memories of several Scholastic Book Fairs. Where do you read? I, um, <laughs> why did that cat in the hat rhyme just come into my head? I can read on the train, I can read in the tree. I can read by the sea. Just let me be. I do like reading in the parks. Whenever the weather gets nice, I take a lot of mental health walks and we'll usually find a bench and read there. I tend to have to read upright. If I lay down, I will fall asleep. It's quite unfortunate. <laughs> I'm not a bed reader. I'm also quite blind. So if I'm reading, I will have to have the book like here. And I've bent many uh, glasses doing that. And I'm trying to be better. I'm trying to be a real uh, grown adult. <laughs> I typically read here uh, or in one of the corners of the couch. I read on that chair over there. I read at the park. I love reading at bookstores. I love going to... I was the other day at a used bookstore on Mercer Street and we spent a long time at that bookstore and the person that I was with just kept... This person left with two huge... I've never seen anyone ball so hard at a used bookstore. <laughs> but there's something about like it's not it's not even reading at a library, it's like reading at a bookstore where you just like find a random ladder and like sit yourself down and read. I love that. Yeah, anywhere that's not a bed. So what kind of books do you like to read? As my, I think as I've been reading more, my tape, it's like sifting things through like a, what's that thing called? Where you put the sand and the sand comes and then it just leaves like the little jewels. <laughs> that. I'm finding that as I read more, my... I'm, I'm sort of knowing what I like a little bit more, so I definitely like literary fiction. I definitely, I read a lot of translated fiction, contemporary fiction, and I think that's really, at least for now, that's my jam, and I'm really enjoying finding, because I feel like literary fiction is also just so broad, so finding what exactly it is I like, and I've noticed how much my taste for certain types of writing has changed, and it's just really fun to see that, that morph as I mature in my reading. Also, so even though I do literary and translated fiction, I am always trying to do nonfiction and poetry. Poetry is something that I'm constantly trying to get into. I'm not great at picking it up. It'll be like bursts or moments or events, I should say. Like sometimes if it's snowing, I'll pick up a poetry collection. And I think it's also because poetry is not something that you consume. It's hard to consume it over time for me. I feel like I just have to have that one time and I take what I can take and then I put it back on the shelf and so I feel like I've started a lot of poetry collections but haven't really made my way through many in its entirety but that's something that I'm trying to change. I'm trying to just be more diligent about poetry. And then what does your book collection look like? So I thought I would do a bookshelf tour but disclaimer so I do live in New York City and I don't have very much space and even though those things are true, I continue to try <laughs> to make those not true. So I have a bookshelf. That's a lie. I have two bookshelves and one of them is here. I'll show you. And then the other is a bookshelf that I use as a table end and it's tucked next to my couch and that's like my repository of books. And then I have some other shelves. So I will take you on a little bookshelf slash book pile slash You'll see. You'll see. Weird, just me holding this. Okay. Um, so up here we have classics. Here we have, well, here we have short story collections, some like literary journals. And then here I've been trying to be better about reading through authors that I like bibliographies. And so I have some James Baldwin books here. I have Gabriel Garcia Marquez. And then I have Miss Isabel Allende. So with Isabel Allende, I read Eva Luna and I adored that book. And I was like, I need to by everything she's ever written and I want to read them in Spanish and if it's anything like Eva Luna I will adore it and then I have not encountered any other book by her that I really like so <laughs> I think she may get demoted and I might add Miss Annie or no to her spot though I've also only read one I've only read Simple Passion but I really liked it 
and so maybe I should read more of her books before doing that. But this is a section I just want to be better about reading through author's bibliography. Actually, uh, I will show you later, but yeah, so that's that. And then here we have a ton of markers, but <laughs> more importantly, we have my favorites um, shelf. So that's them. Whenever I really, really like a book, it goes in this section here. And I guess if you like any of these, I'm gonna want. All right, then down here we have lots of nonfiction, and then here we have some like. <laughs> I went to a used bookstore and they called it a cult or new age, so I guess that's what you can call that. And then here we have some like recently purchased books, and I guess what I wanted to say before is that Ms. Ferrante is one. She just doesn't fit on my shelf. I'm not trying to disrespect her in any way because she really is one of my new favorite authors. Um, but she is one whose bibliography I'm almost through with. I just have to read this one and this one and then troubling love and then i will have read her whole catalog so i'm really excited to do that renee from so i read this book recently posted her sort of experience reading through elena ferrante's entire bibliography and that was a great video so if you are interested in that or if you haven't seen it yet i will link it down below but yeah great video great gal i love renee so that's this baby then here we have the pile. These are piles that I've just like recently acquired or books that have been sent over. And I try to unload these frequently um, because they get real tall. This was covering the painting at one point and I was like, enough. <laughs> yeah, so these are just books that I haven't read yet. Not to say that I've read every book on my shelf, but these are just like more recent acquisitions that I have to get through. And I kind of look at this every time I want to buy something. So really it's just like a system of self bullying is what I'll say. <laughs> I'm just trying to get some sort of self-control. And then here is the like immediate TBR section. So I'm trying to get through these and every time, because I'm easily, easily swayed, every time I like scroll on bookstagram or something or like get on booktube, I'm just like, you have to. She's here. She exists, so don't just disregard her before I just throw another book on there. But I recently went to, like I said, Mercer Street and got, what's her name? Mary Lynn Robinson and Miriam Tows because of booktube. So self-control thing is not going great, but you know, we're a work in progress, so we move. We also have um, <laughs> books here, like I said, New York real estate. And here we have my Toni Morrison collection. And here I have a lot of just like, social justice books and this is the poetry collection I really i haven't read through many of these collections in their entirety because of what i was saying before but something that i'm working through and towards so i think that's it <laughs> thank you for hanging out thanks if you've made it this far um for watching and yeah we'll see how this goes we'll see if i don't completely panic after hitting publish on that first one but this was fun um, and I, I hope to let's chat. Yeah, I appreciate y'all. Yeah.